Okay, so we continue with the next lecture on the limitation of uh, Lima theory. Okay, Lima theory, as it uh, appears uh, according to what I'm going to speak about, it has got some limitations because, uh, as I told you, there is there are data uh, which the Lima theory can't explain. So, okay, uh, limitations of the Lima theory. So the lemma is viewed as, it's okay, uh, recap of the uh, lemma uh, theory. The lemma is viewed as a pre-phonological pre-sound, pre-phonological pre-sound, abstract, okay, mental representation that captures information about a word's meaning and the way it can interact with other words in an expression. It accounts for picture naming behavior, speech errors, tip of the tongue experiences. And that's what we have said last time, okay? Because it explains these data. However, Alfonso Caramaza, 1997, argues that Lima theory does not do a very good job dealing with evidence from patients with brain damage. Brain damage can lead, as you know, to language production difficulties. And different types of damage can lead to different patterns of difficulties. If there is a damage in one area of the brain, you have a specific kind of difficulty in terms of language production. If you have another uh, brain damage somewhere else in the brain, another area of the brain, you have another uh, kind of uh, difficulty, okay, for language production. This guy, he argues that if the lemma is a necessary level of representation in production, then brain damage can affect, or that affects the set of lemma representations should have consistent effects on people's ability to produce language, whether in speaking or writing. So, Akhraz was talking about uh, writing. What do you understand from this? Yes, please, Aital. Well, uh, Just this small, this next uh, bullet. I think what's amazing is that since the is important, why do people with brain damage why are they able to speak, for example, without showing such uh, kind of deficiency in language? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Somebody? I give you time. Take your time. Okay, read it again and again, and then I want to hear from mm -hmm. you your interpretation. Don't write, just uh, listen. You're going to have everything for you. It's English, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think that the vocabulary is clear, right? Uh, vocabulary, all of it, you know it. So it's something related to your uh, reading uh, process. Yes, Sumia? Why some people might not have the ability to speak, but they can write. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, uh, yeah. Yes? For example, people uh, can communicate well, but they don't have, they are not good in writing. If the lemma is the responsible for production of language, why it doesn't, why it doesn't affect their writing? Why it, uh, yes, yes, the, yes, you are yeah, yeah. approaching, yeah. So if we have this lemma concept, mental representation, and if this lemma is uh, damaged, brain damage, okay? Now, is, why is it the, and if this lemma, according to the theory will or Laplace or Dell uh, model, if, okay, uh, the brain damage that affects the set of lemma should have consistent 
effects on people's ability to produce language, whether in speaking or writing. If it is affected, the brain damage, therefore, we should have a consistent difficulty. The same difficulty we're going to have in speaking, like slips of the tongue, etc., we're going to have something similar in writing. Okay? If in uh, speaking we have, we produce a word that is phonologically correct, but semantically not correct, okay? We should have a similar issue in writing. Okay? Then, you understand now the idea? Yeah. If the lemma theory, yes, it exists. Now, how should, how could, if it exists and if it damaged, therefore, the difficulties that tend to show themselves in speaking should show themselves in writing. There should be some same pattern, okay? Consistent effects on people's ability to produce language, whether in speaking or writing. This is not the case according to our new uh, researcher here, Karamazov. It's not the case. It's not the case? What does this mean, it's not the case? Yes? Because you found that lemma is not a crucial component in the language production, so um, patients can uh, have the difficulty only with the content words or That's right. That's right. It's not part of uh, complete damage. It is <laughs> yeah. only partial damage. Yes. Partial damage. And this damage or difficulties, they are not consistent. If people have, in speaking, have a problem with content words and less problems with function or grammatical words, in the writing they have the reverse. They have more difficulty with content words in writing and less difficulty with grammatical or grammatically rich words in writing. Normally the lemma, if it is a, if it affected, damaged, we should have the same things appearing in speaking and writing, which is not the case, as we are going to see now. The lemma theory postulates that lemmas represent grammatical information associated with specific words. This is what we have seen. This is a recap. And on the basis of this recap, we go into new elements. If lemmas are damaged, it should be the case that grammatical aspects of production should be affected as well. So, if lemmas are damaged, it should be the case that grammatical aspects of production should be affected as well. Karamaza notices that there are patients who have difficulty with just some types of words. Some patients witness difficulty regarding content words. Some patients witness difficulty regarding content words. What do we mean by content words? These words that are semantically rich. Okay, like cat, table, door, window. And then we have another category of words. And these people, they have little difficulty with function words. And these are semantically light grammatical markers, like the, of, was, more related to grammar, function. Okay? So let me repeat. So, what he notices, Karamaza, he notices some patients witness difficulty regarding Content words. They have little difficulty with function words. Okay? Now, we continue. This is what he notices. But, let's move on. This is for speaking. The lemma theory would suggest that such a patient has the lemmas, this kind of patient that we have seen in the... Okay? Okay? has lemmas for content words are selectively damaged. Whereas the lemmas representing function words are fine within the same patient. That's why he has difficulty with content semantically rich words, content rich words, and has least difficulty with grammatical or function rich words. Okay? According to the lemma theory, yes? That's why also in, in, in the first um, slide explanation, he said a set of words, okay? Mm -hmm. so we, a set of lemmas. Yes. So uh, this, this um, defines that there are different lemmas, okay? Or perhaps the lemmas are, are differentiated into content lemmas and... Uh, We're going to see. We're going to see what he suggests, okay? Karamaza, however, 
notes, this is a continuation of his discovery, of his research, of his data. He notices that in addition to that kind of patient, where he notices that he has more difficulty with content-rich words and less difficulty with function-rich words, now he notices that there is another feature, specific feature. Karamaz, however, notes that there are patients who have a pattern of problems, content or function words, that occur in oral communication, whereas the opposite pattern, content or function words, can happen in writing. Let me explain. For example, he notices that there are some patients, suppose, who have problems, okay, for content words in oral communication, more problems for content when oral communication, and less problems for function words in oral communication. So we focus on oral communication. More difficulty with content words, less difficulty with content. The same patients, the same patients, kind of patients, he notices, Karamaz notes that in writing, it doesn't manifest in the same way. It's, may, it's the reverse. They have less problems with content rich words and more problems with function rich words. According to the lemma theory, the lemma theory tells you uh, if there is damage of the lemma, it's broken or whatever. Now the same thing should manifest itself in oral communication and in writing. But for Karamaza, this is not the case. He has got data showing that whereas in oral communication we have one pattern of difficulty, in, all, in written communication, we have another pattern, different, of difficulty. Okay? If uh, both processes tap into the same set of limas, it should not be possible for this pattern of problems to take place. It's a repetition, okay? But it's the same idea, according to the lemma theory, okay? If both processes tap into the same set of limas, it should not be possible for this pattern of problems to take place. Okay, lemma. Everything goes okay all the time. But this is not the case. We can have manifestations, different manifestations in oral communication by opposition to written communication. If the spoken production problem for content words is based on broken content word lemmas, then the same problem should take place in the writing. Okay? Semantic substitution errors in brain damaged patients lead to the fact that they would always use the wrong word. The patient would say, this is another kind of uh, problem, data. The patient would say, so here it's a data, it's data related to semantic substitution. Okay? And semantic substitution, we know it, so instead of using one word, we use another word, okay, but in the same field, okay? Uh, similar to mixed errors, but uh, okay, another set of uh, problems. So, semantic uh, substitution errors in brain damaged patients lead to the fact that they would always use the wrong word. So, for example, the patient would say dish when asked to name a picture of a cook. Picture of a cook. What do you think it means? Ah, oh, it means dish. Brain damage. He has got brain damage. Oral communication. Okay? Now, let's move on. When we give the same picture to the same patient, right, brain damage, and we ask the patient, can you name it? But not orally. Write it. What? She wrote fox when asked to write the name of picture cook. Okay? Now, what does this mean? These errors were constant and not random. Karamaza suggests that people have two... This is the way he... Uh, I told you that we're going to see how uh, he explains this. He is going to go for a level of interpretation where he uh, takes into account a kind of separation. Okay? Karamaza suggests that people have two separate sources of word form information. There are two, maybe you can call it two types of lemmas. I can use this word, two types of lemmas, okay? One for oral communication, and another one for 
rise in communication in the brain somewhere. Okay? He also postulates that grammatical information is stored separately from lemma representations. So he goes for separation of lemmas, mental representations, and he even goes to separation of lemmas from grammatical information. Separates everything. That's why we have such a kind of data where things tend to be different and separated from oral communication to written communication. He argues that this kind of separation between lemmas and this kind of separation between grammatical information and lemma representations, he argues that this explains the different patterns of function word and content word deficits within the same patient that depends on whether the patient is speaking or writing. Okay? So, level, have a lemma, lemma for speaking, another lemma for writing. Okay? So the lemma for speaking, he says it's a right. Okay? Okay, no problem for it. That's why. But the lemma for writing, there is a problem. And it goes on separating, separating this. Okay? The other level of separation is between mental representations and grammatical information, which already, in fact, existed uh, in, the, in the theory from the very beginning. 